welcome and good afternoon we're here at risk minds usa in boston massachusetts and today we're speaking with michelle mccarthy who's a director of risk management at nuveen investments michelle has a particular interest and attention to model validation issues with the financial crisis certainly there's a lot of attention to the use of models their reliability predictability michelle what can you tell us about model validation particular to the buy side industry in the buy side the use of models is really different than the sell side and i think it means that the steps you need to take for model risk management are quite different so on the sell side we're using models to um, estimate our regulatory capital and to be the original pricer of instruments and if those models are flawed we might have too little regulatory capital and we might put a bad price on an instrument and so you need quite a lot of rigor around that quite a few people to independently challenge and test the models document them recalibrate them every year on the buy side we're not using models to compute regulatory capital and in only certain cases in certain kinds of firms are you using models to price an instrument as the original pricer of the instrument Typically, buy-side firms are going out and getting two bids from someone else. They might use a model to estimate as they're trading, is it a good deal or not? But at the end of the day, the correct price will be on that asset. So uh, the use of models is more curtailed, and I think that model risk management needs to be different in that circumstance. So what are the challenges with model validation? Is it an exercise in having somebody check math? Is it somebody just judging it as this really reasonable? Is it coincide with something that's reality? The, there's a lot of steps to having a good model validation. The first one is having good documentation that somebody besides the model creator is able to read and figure out what the logic of the model is. Then the model validator um, is going to check that what they would expect the results to be for given inputs. They might create the model themselves in C++ or some other language, or they might instead look at the code of the model and see does it deliver what this logic is supposed to deliver. Finally, they're going to check the assumptions to the model. Where do they come from? Who sets them? And they're going to see how good is the model at predicting then subsequent results by backtesting it over the past. So those are, that's, all, that's intensive. That's a lot to do. And you'd better save that kind of firepower and the intellect of the person who needs to be able to challenge that model. You better save it for when you really need it. You can't do it to every single Excel spreadsheet that's used as a scratch pad in a firm. Otherwise, you'd have more model validators than you'd have employees in a firm. So you have to really save it for where you need to make sure that the model is delivering expected results because it's a serious model that could really affect the firm. Do you, do you have guidance for what really ought to be thought of as a model? You mentioned spreadsheets. You mentioned C++. Mm -hmm. um, how does one actually define what should be looked at as a, as a model? As I see the most recent regulatory guidance, um, the uh, OCC 2011-12, I think it's SR 11-7, um, and have heard some regulatory speakers on the topic, not every tool that's an analytical tool is a model. Um, and in fact, it really has to be not just calculators that would have a bunch of inputs, but if done correctly, will always give the same output. They have to be models that have some uncertainty or variability or volatility around them. So um, models that um, have uh, produce an option price, that's got some variability around it. Different folks will come up with a different answer um, b because they're estimating implied volatility differently. A capital model, that has some variability around it. But a yield calculator for a bond, no. That one doesn't count. It definitely needs good technology change controls. It definitely needs to be operated accurately, but doesn't fall into the definition, as I read it, of a model that requires this kind of challenge and validation. Well, what is the relationship between a model validation function and the people who actually develop models, use models. Is there a, a tension there? Or is there a partnership there? How does that actually work? Um, the, there's almost always been a tension. And in the banking world where it's become part of something they have to do, people have learned to get over it. Um, in, the, in the asset management world, it can be quite difficult because the person who creates the model is often the person that's created the investment theory. And by definition, they're selling themselves as the smartest person in the room, creating something no one else could create, and that's why you should invest with them. So it's really hard for them to accept that somebody else could kick the tires on their model and perhaps tell them that they did some bits of it in dollars and other bits of it in percents, and therefore the, the answer isn't correct. Mm -hmm. so, um, so there is usually tension, and it's irritating having somebody go through your
your work papers and your model and not understand it and you have to spend time with them. So typically there is some kind of tension between a model validator and the model developer. Um, and uh, you know, th that's, that's a natural part of the process, but um, it's not something they're used to in the asset management side quite as they're used to it on the banking side. And, and one last question. Um, what can we expect from model validation? If we were having this conversation a year from now or two years from now, what would we be saying has worked out well? What would we expect to be as the, uh, as the outcome of all of this effort? I've seen good model validations catch actual errors. So you'll know the model is functioning as expected. I've seen uh, models where assumptions don't get updated that really should change with time. And so you can assume if a validator is doing their job, they will remind everyone that it's time to update the assumptions. What the model, what the process can't do is make the models predict the future any better than um, they're set up to do. It'll si simply make sure the engine is functioning as expected. Mm -hmm. If it's fit to a history set and it has an investment theory that doesn't turn out to, to uh, make money or, or work well, that's not a fault of model validation. If it loses money because it was specified to capture, to minimize a certain market's volatility and it doesn't do that accurately, that's what it's supposed to catch. So it's simply a, a checking, of the, checking of the engine. It isn't making sure you're driving in the right direction. Well, that's, thank you very much, Michelle. That's certainly wisdom I think we can all benefit by and appreciate you taking a few minutes uh, to spend your time with us. Absolutely.